in 2 Chronicles chapter 1 and verse 7. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge, that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can judge this thy people that is so great? And God said to Solomon, Because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast asked long life, but hast uh, asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. What God gave Solomon exceeded what anyone before him or after him would receive. He said so. I mean, he had it made. You could not reach heights any higher than Solomon had. I mean, let's think about a little bit of his background. He was the son of King David. Uh, he was the third king of Israel, God's chosen nation. And he had been granted great, excelling wisdom from God and was endued uh, with great wealth and honor, responsibility, and influence. There was none like Solomon in his day in all the earth. He had it all. But there was a problem. Uh, take your Bibles and turn to 1 Kings chapter 4. 1 Kings chapter 4. I'm, laying the, I'm setting the background now for Solomon. All right? 1 Kings chapter 4 and verse 29. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much, and largeness of heart even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan uh, the Ezrahite and Heman and Shalcal and Darda the sons of Mahol, and his fame was in all nations round about. When you read verse 31, I want you in your mind right now to kind of, let, let's update that to right now. Think of who are considered to be the most brilliant minds in the world. The Einsteins, so to speak. That's the list of verse 31 in the day of Solomon. These people that are listed, I mean, you've never heard of these people, but back then, everybody heard of them. Everybody knew them. The, the most brilliant of the brilliant. And the Bible says that Solomon was wiser than them all. Wouldn't you like to be wiser than them all? I hope you do better with it than Solomon did. Because see, to have wisdom does not mean you practice wisdom. To be wise means you still can have the choice. You see, there was something about Solomon in all this splendor and all this glory, he was still human. He still had his frailties. He still had his weaknesses. The Bible says in verse 32 that, uh, and he spake 3,000 proverbs. He was a great writer. Like Shakespeare. And his songs were a thousand five. He was the Lennon and McCartney. 
He was the great classical composers like Beethoven. I mean, he would, he'd written a thousand. And what a songwriter. And it says, And he spake of trees from the uh, cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. He was an expert in botany. Expert. He spake also of beasts and of fowl and of creeping things and of fishes. Zoology and marine biology and all these things that we, we look at people that have all of these letters behind their name and all the degrees that they have. And really the Bible says that Solomon exceeded them all. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth which had, uh, which had heard of his wisdom. He was considered the world's authority, the expert, the, the guru, the go-to. Uh, matter of fact, we'll use a word that might be thrown around today because of what day it is. He was the goat. He was the greatest of all time. All right? But Solomon had a sin nature. Solomon was a man. He also had a bullseye on his back. And the devil shot at him every chance he got. Why? Because God had blessed him and God had put him in the position that he was in. And the devil wanted to bring him down. The devil attacks our weaknesses. But I want you to also know that God will attack, that the devil will attack your strengths and try to use them against you. Did that with Solomon. Temptations was something that Solomon had to deal with. He had weakness and frailty and, and he had to deal with lust and and I believe as you read the story of Solomon, you'll find out there was two real big problems he had. One of them was a problem with pride. And the other one was a problem with not being content. Even though he had all that he had, it wasn't enough. You would think he would be satisfied. But he was not. Temptations, by the way, are fed by pride. The devil had a foothold in his life. When pride is there, he'll have a foothold in your life. Pride is satisfied, but always wants more and thinks you deserve more. Paul said in Philippians 4.11, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Solomon wasn't that way. Solomon was not content with all the accolades, with all the credit, with all the, all the honor, all the glory, all that he had, that he had been blessed by God with. <clears throat> he said, I think I'm going to try something else. Turn in your Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Like I said, the introduction will be longer than the message. In Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 12, The Bible says, I the preacher, the declarer of truth, I the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travail hath God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. By the way, that's Solomon's wisdom speaking. He said, I've looked around, and I, and I see what's happening under the sun. And, and that, that reference is talking about those things that are done by man. I, I've seen what man can do. And man might want to pat man on the back, and tell them how wonderful they are and how all these great accomplishments that, they, that they've done. But Solomon looked at it and he said, it was vanity and vexation of spirit. Now you would think he'd be smart enough to listen to his own PR. 
but he wasn't. Because it says in verse 15, That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. I communed, here's his problem, I communed with mine own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge, and I gave my heart to know wisdom I wish there was a period there, but it's not. It says, and to know madness and folly. You know, I perceived this also was vexation of spirit. I actually knew that doing the same thing over and over again was insanity if I was expecting something else to happen, but I gave my heart to it anyway I'm going to try it anyway just because others may have failed before me that's not going to happen to me you ever heard anybody think that way see the way they live oh yeah dabbling with this might have messed up their life but it's not going to mess up mine I'm going to give myself to those things for in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. That's not his wisdom speaking. He's giving himself over to thinking like the world thinks. Now, with all his wisdom, he knew that a pursuit of the world would bring vexation of spirit, he chose to pursue it anyway. <clears throat> Hope you never did this. Mama told me if I put my hand on the stove, it'd burn me. I'm just waiting for Mama to get out of the room. You know, she was telling me what was right, but I think I'll just try it anyway. Well, she was right. Solomon knew that a pursuit of the world would burn him. And he did it anyway. He did it anyway. <clears throat> little country logic, I guess. Do you really have to put your hand in the fire to know it'll burn you? I mean, you already know. So, where's the wisdom in doing it anyway? Well, it makes no sense. But sin makes no sense. Worldliness makes no sense. But we do it anyway. We pursue it anyway. Now look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 1. I said in mine heart, Go to now, I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, well this also was vanity, but he went after it anyway. And of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, what doeth it? I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. I made me great works. I builded me houses. I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchards. By the way, that word me that you see over and over again, you could write in your Bible the word pride and you'd understand what's going on. I got me this and I got me that and I got me the other. And he had, listen, Solomon has the most unique position in all of history. He could do every bit of this without restraint. Remember, he was the wealthiest and the wisest. He had the authority as the king. If he chose to, he could make the rules and make them up as he went along. He said, I can do any of this. Listen, we have limited resources, don't we? He didn't, really. He could do whatever he set his mind to. And this, is what he, this was his pursuit. Do you know what he's doing? He's doing what the majority of the world strives for every day. 
the pursuit of pleasure, laughter, mirth, wine, folly. Let me get me great works. Let me get me houses. Let me get me vineyards. Let me get gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. Also, I had of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces. I get me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. Now, I didn't use it, but I had it. And whatsoever my listen, and whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Okay, how did it turn out? Verse eleven. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. It's already been tried. Listen, world, it's already been tried, and it doesn't work. The only what will really satisfy me if I can just get a little more. Statement was made years ago. Now I guess it's an obsolete statement. Someone asked the question of a millionaire. Now I guess you would have to say a billionaire or a trillionaire. I don't know what. You know. But they asked the question of a bi a billionaire, a millionaire. What would what would satisfy you? And they said one more dollar. Well, if that would satisfy them they would be satisfied. But they're not. They're pursuing, and they're pursuing. And it's all about me. I want this, and I want that, and I want the other. And that's the, well, I hate to put it this way, but that's the American dream. Let me gain under the sun here. Let me gain for me, and that will satisfy me. Solomon said, I had it all, and it was all vanity and vexation of spirit. Vanity, the word vanity means to have, it's useless, it's worthless, it has no value. And the idea of being vexation of spirit is that it, it literally just eats away at you. Some of the wealthiest people in the world are some of the most miserable. Vexation of spirit. <clears throat> I'm not telling you you don't need to have a job. I'm not telling you you don't need to make money. And the Bible does not say that money is the root of all evil. It says the love of it is the love of, is root of all evil. Because we certainly need to be able to do some things. But does it have you? Is that the pursuit? Is to have things? If it is, the things will have you. Solomon found that to, that to be true. After all of these scriptures, I want to address the point. Solomon is the ultimate example of what it's like when you choose to pursue the uh, I use the word ultimate example because nothing was held back from him. He had the authority and the wealth to pursue everything he set his mind to. He may have limited, he, uh, we may have limited resources. He did not. No one had the wherewithal to pursue the world like Solomon. Well, it might not have turned out well for him, but 
but I'm going to make it work. Those are statements of the ones that will be living a life of vanity and vexation of spirit. I thought, <clears throat> and I, I don't know if I've ever actually told you this or not. I probably have. I don't know. Uh, after a while, I've, I've preached so many messages and whatnot that they kind of all run together in my head. Not really sure where I preached them or whatever. <clears throat> But I thought the greatest thing that could ever happen on this earth was to play drums and have somebody come and listen to me play and even pay to hear me play. Like that was some great accomplishment. But that was my pursuit. And then I got saved. And I found out that the, the pursuit that I'd had that was so vitally important to me was vanity and vexation of spirit. If that kind of, if that kind of life is, is so wonderful and so great, how come people die so young? How come they kill themselves, really, by what they're doing? Even with all the potential he had, his wealth, his position, his wisdom, and all of that had been given to him by God to be used for good, he still chose to pursue the world. What Solomon lived out was what the world views as being successful. He had more money, more things, uh, more fame, more prestige, more experiences, more fun, more pleasure, more self-satisfaction, more toys, more recreation, more possessions, more glamour, more glitter. He had all the shiny things. He had more and more and more. <clears throat> Could I say to you that pursuing all those things that Solomon has already put forth the ultimate effort to have it all and he got it and it didn't satisfy him? So look at what the world's doing. Look at maybe what you've done in your life. Look at what maybe somebody in your family's doing. There might be some in your family that look at you and think you're absolutely crazy for being here this morning. Right. And what they're pursuing is what's crazy. Right. Amen. Like the heart, the Bible says, that panteth after the water brook. That's H-A-R-T. That's talking about a deer. Like that deer is panning after that water brook. That's the way we ought to be pursuing. We ought to be pursuing God. And if we would pursue God, that would satisfy. But all that the world has to offer, all you'll find out is you just need one more and one more and one more. It's already been tried. You're not, you're not going to set a precedent. It's already been tried. And it doesn't work. Pursuing the world doesn't work. It is vanity and vexation of spirit. The scripture says he found it to be that way. He was looking for satisfaction in the world, but his pursuit tormented him. That's the vexation part. The world promises that everything will be wonderful if you go its way, but it does not deliver on its promises, and it never will. <clears throat> Have you thought about how, how deceiving the devil really is? The devil makes all these promises about how wonderful things are going to be if you follow him, and then you find out where he's going.
Now, he's not going to tell you that. He's going to tell you how wonderful it will be if you'll follow him because he already knows that's where he's going. But he hates God so much he wants to take you with him. But he'll promise all kinds of things. The pursuit of the world leads to personal destruction and the devil laughs at our calamity. He laughs. He said, oh, fooled another one. Tricked another one. Convinced another one. <clears throat> uh, I know it's probably hard for you to believe, but I was real hard-headed when I was a kid. And... Uh, me and my dad, we'd butt heads right often. Uh, I, 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 uh, Nancy was taking a picture the other day of us, and I looked at that picture, and I said, that's my dad. I look just like him. And, and in a lot of ways, we, we had a, a same way of looking at things, but when we didn't, I mean, it was just like his head and my head. And sometimes he would stop, you know, trying to explain it to me. He said, that's just what I said. So you do that. But he would say, listen, from experience, he would say, this works this way. And I said, but I want to try it this way. I believe this will work. Every once in a while, there actually is two ways to do something but not when it comes to spiritual things. Never is it two different ways. There might be two different ways to pull a transmission out of a car, in a way. But when it comes to the things that really matter, there's only one way, and that's God's way. That's it. And if we try anything else, it's vanity and vexation of spirit. But we are so hard-headed, the Bible uses the word stiff neck. that when we're that way, the fire's going to burn you if you put your hand in, well, I'm just going to see. And you do it anyway, and it will. It's already been proven. That's the case. We don't need to try it. We don't need to dabble in that. And, and, and God forbid that we would think, oh, I'm strong enough to handle this. I found a poem years ago, and I wished I could quote it, but I can't. Uh, <clears throat> but it, the, the name of the poem was the word prevention. And the, the, the gist of the poem was like this. There was this big uh, road on the side of a mountain. And people were driving off of the road and, and landing down in the valley and dying. And the town people tried to get together to figure out how can we fix this problem? And some said, well, why don't we put a cemetery down in the valley? Why don't we put a hospital down in the valley? And somebody said, have we ever considered a guardrail? Prevention. Have we ever considered slowing down? Have we ever considered being cautious? Have we ever considered doing what's right? Now going back to the hard-headed days, when I was younger, I thought that if I could think it, I could do it. And if I thought it, I thought I could do it behind the wheel of a car. And I had friends of mine that sat in the front seat with me, and they said, if you ever slow this car down, I'm going to kill you. So I just decided not to slow down. See, that was my thinking. Do you know why I'm still here? Grace of God. <laughs> That's all. God looks into the future. I can't do this. I sure am glad he could see me saved. Because <laughs> I sure was trying hard to kill myself. Because I was pursuing the world. 
and those things that you quote unquote hear about the stereotypes of what rock musicians are like got the t-shirt and the ball cap for that but the grace of God made the difference people are making all kinds of excuses as to why they will not come to God why they think the things of this world are worth holding on to or, or why they put more value on worldliness than on godliness Solomon tried it all and it was vanity and vexation of spirit Solomon proved the world cannot satisfy you and it will not satisfy you let me ask you just a simple question what is it that's so great that you're holding on to that's keeping you from coming to God this is, this is what I I really had to give up something to come to God I really did my future in hell I had to give that up. Well, I'm sure glad I did. But if you really think about it, how can you give up anything that has greater value? You can't. A relationship with Him is greater than anything. But people are, people are making all kinds of excuses and they're going all this way and doing all these things. The only thing that will satisfy is to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and to walk with Him in this world of vanity. Did you know that we're living under the sun, but with our relationship with God, we can do things beyond the sun? We can do things of eternal value? This, this is the, uh, uh, the Bible Institute is not just about now. It's about eternity. I, you know, I guess I could teach you something. I, I, I love history, and, and I've, I've taught history in school. I could teach you something about history, and I could tell you a little something about the Civil War. I've read a lot about it. I might not have the same opinion about it you do, but I've read a lot about it. But you know what? After it was all said and done, Every bit of that just be vanity and vexation. A few bits. We wouldn't do any good. We need to learn the things that really matter and grow in the things that really matter. And Solomon had the opportunity. Oh, but he wasted it. Not trying to make a joke out of this, but we, Solomon proved he might have been the wisest man in the world, but he didn't use wisdom. You know that man had 700 wives and 300 concubines, the Bible says. That doesn't sound too wise to me. As a matter of fact, if you have two, you've gone against biblical principle. And what do you think that's going to be? Vexation of spirit. So, here's the question. What are you pursuing? <clears throat> Lexus says they were pursuing excellence. Our, some of our founding documents talk about that we have the pursuit of happiness. I wonder what that really means. Because I'm going to tell you, you're never going to be happy unless you're happy in Jesus. But we can pursue that, and we should. What is important to you? I mean, why didn't you wear your San Francisco jersey or your Kansas City jersey this morning? I read somewhere that that's what they're going to do today at that church. They're going to have a Super Bowl Sunday. What are you, what's the choices that you're making? Listen to the true call of wisdom. Come to Jesus. Receive eternal life. The pursuit of the world will only lead to your destruction. And the devil will laugh. I fooled another one. I fooled another one. 
this, this church, is, I, I believe, is, is blessed in a lot of ways. And one of the ways that I've noticed since I've been here that just, I mean, this one just blesses my heart. I mean, just blesses my heart. <clears throat> I don't mean this in the wrong way, but not everybody in this church is my age or older. There are younger people here in this place being told the truth, being shown how to live a life that really matters. And unless they're fooling me, and I can be fooled, you know, but it looks like to me they want to be here for the most part. Because, see, they, they've got problems. They've got peer pressure. They've got things, you know, trying to convince them that, oh, Solomon, he was going the right direction. He just didn't do it right. But it's such a blessing because there's a truth to this. If you go the way of the world, it will destroy you. But the ways of God bring eternal life. There is a quality to a life in Christ that the world cannot offer. And only that quality of life can satisfy your soul. That's it. So you can go ahead. I told you, if you put your hand on the stove, it'll burn you. You can go ahead and try it. But it's going to burn you. Solomon's already told us, all this pursuit will be nothing but vanity and vexation of spirit. But you can go ahead and try it, but it's going to be vanity and vexation of spirit. I hope you'll see that before it's too late. Because so many people never came back. It was too late. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.